Having alopecia means having permanent hair loss, right? Not necessarily. There are many types of alopecia and just because you were diagnosed with it, that doesn't always mean all hope is lost. Today I'm here to talk about alopecia so you can get more clear on what it is and what it means for you if you have it. I'm going to be covering the three most common types of alopecia, my experience in treating them and helping clients regrow their hair, and I'm going to be giving you tips on how to treat it at home if you have one of these treatable types. But before we get into this video, I need you to like, comment your favorite TV show, share this video, and subscribe because it helps the channel grow and it helps the air and I continue bringing you all videos that actually help you achieve your hair goals at no cost to you. So without further ado, let's hop right into this video. down I'm looking at my phone and before we get into the three most common types of alopecia and what you can do at home to treat them I need to get clear on what this video is and what it is not in this video I am giving you the causes of the three most common types of alopecia and the herbs and techniques you can use to treat them at home to help you regrow your hair I'm not giving you specific recipes or routines because alopecia varies from person to person and in order to give you a specific routine a specific plan to help you reach your particular hair goals with your specific type of alopecia I would need to sit down talk with you find out what is going on in your life and in your routines and then draft a specific plan and a routine and a recipe for you to follow and I only do that through my holistic natural hair consultation service so if you want a natural hair growth plan tailored to the particular type of alopecia that you are facing and get results like these which is a client who was suffering with alopecia who a year later whose hair looks like this if you want a plan that will get you results like that I need you to go to justforblackgirls.com and book a consultation with me and once you are a client of mine you're a client of mine I don't stop working with you until you get your results so now let's talk alopecia throughout the years alopecia has essentially been swept under one big umbrella to mean permanent hair loss but that's just not what the reality is Alopecia is the lack or loss of hair from areas of the body where hair is usually found. And according to the Oxford Dictionary of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, it refers to human hair loss. So as you can see from both of these reputable sources, nowhere in their definitions of alopecia does it say it includes permanent hair loss. It simply means hair loss in an area where hair is expected to be found. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. There are two categories that the various types of alopecia are put into, scarring and non-scarring. In a 2019 study, to find out how often people are diagnosed with particular types of alopecia and to assess the variations of alopecia around the globe, there were over 3,000 diagnoses of alopecia. 73% of those cases were non-scarring. The other 27% were scarring. And this is really good news. This is good news because it means that if you were diagnosed with alopecia, there's a really good chance that you were diagnosed with a non-scarring type of alopecia, which means that you have the possibility of regrowing hair. With scarring alopecia, that means that you have damage to your hair follicles that has permanently removed the ability to grow hair. And in my experience, clients can have both. Clients can have follicles that are permanently scarred as well as follicles that are not. And what we would do in that case is work with the follicles that still are producing hair to essentially make up for the follicles that are no longer producing hair and grow those areas in and they're essentially not even noticeable. Those hair follicles that are permanently scarred. So if you were told that you have permanent scarring to your hair follicles, you should definitely go to a trichologist and get your scalp assessed to see how many hair follicles you have that still are producing hair growth, how many hair follicles are no longer producing hair growth to see if you have more hair follicles that are still working than not and that could really give you a way to continue growing your hair and having a, a head full of hair even though some of your follicles are permanently scarred. So I did want to add that tidbit in there. Um, you can have scarring, but that doesn't mean that doesn't have to be the end of your possibility of growing hair. So the first kind of alopecia we're going to talk about today is androgenetic alopecia. In the 2019 study that I referenced, nearly 40% of the 3,000 diagnoses of alopecia 
were androgenetic alopecia. Androgenetic is referred to as androgenic alopecia, male pattern baldness, and female pattern baldness, to name a few. And it can be experienced by teens, men, and women. And for women, it can be caused due to imbalances in our hormones. For example, women who are experiencing menopause or who are pre or post menopause, women who have PCOS or are taking medications that are essentially throwing off the balance of androgens in our body. So when our estrogen or progesterone levels drop, our androgen levels increase and estrogen and progesterone levels can drop for various reasons like menopause, PCOS, or other kinds of hormone, hormone imbalancing disorders and conditions. For androgenic alopecia, your approach needs to be double action. You have to be taking internal action to bring balance to your hormones and you also need to be increasing the flow of nutrients to your hair follicles that's going to promote the growth of longer, healthier, thicker, and stronger hair strands. The three herbs that I'm going to mention now are going to be what you can take internally and one of them you can also use topically so I'm just going to get into that right now. The first one is saw palmetto. Saw palmetto in particular has anti-androgenic properties and has gained a lot of popularity in the recent years for being a remedy and a treatment for people who are experiencing androgenic alopecia. This can be taken orally or topically. Another option is red reishi, a mushroom. When taken orally, it stops the progression of testosterone into DHT, which is an androgen. If you've watched my previous videos or if you just do research on, you know, the different ways hormone and hormones impact hair loss, you know that DHT, dihydrotestosterone, is a hormone that when women have too much of it can cause hair loss, thinning, and alopecia. So with red reishi, you take it orally, it stops the progression of testosterone into DHT, which therefore helps to prevent or stop hair loss, thinning, and baldness, also known as alopecia. A third option, especially for women who suffer from PCOS and as a result have too many androgens in their body, omega-3s has been shown in studies to reduce the levels of testosterone in women who are particularly suffering with PCOS. So you can take that as a supplement or you can increase the amount of salmon, tuna, and trout that you eat, which are fish that has omega-3s um, naturally present in them. So if you are struggling with androgenic alopecia, these are three options for you to treat that and to help your hair regrow. And if I didn't mention earlier, androgens, specifically male hormones, when women have too many of them in our bodies, they shrink our hair follicles, which causes baldness, also known as alopecia. So that's how androgens, hormones, all of that ties into androgenic alopecia. And those three options, saw palmetto, which is anti-androgenic, red reishi, which reduces the conversion of testosterone into DHT, which is an androgen, and omega-3s, those particularly decrease the amount of testosterone in the blood. If there's less testosterone, less of it is going to be converted into DHT, which is an androgen, which shrinks your hair follicles and causes baldness. So those are, that's how those three options will help you to treat your androgenic alopecia and help you regrow your hair. The next type of alopecia I want to cover is alopecia areata. In the 2019 study I referenced, nearly 20% of those 3,000 cases were of this type of alopecia. Just like with androgenic alopecia, your approach for alopecia areata has to be double action. The difference is that instead of the internal action being to bring balance to your hormones, your internal action will be focused on lowering the inflammation in your body. Alopecia areata is when the immune system attacks your hair follicles, causing hair loss. In my experience, I've seen this become the case due to chronic stress, which is an environmental factor, a non-genetic factor, causing alopecia areata. There are no known exact factors of what can cause it because anyone can have it. It affects both sexes equally. Adolescents can develop it and genetics does play a part in it. However, more and more research is developing and coming out about how chronic stress, exposure to chronic stress, 
can manifest autoimmune disorders and chronic illnesses in women. So it's very important that you pay attention to your cortisol levels, which is your stress levels, so that way you can be preventative in the development of autoimmune and chronic illnesses. So I say all that to say, when you are approaching treating alopecia areata, your approach has to be similar to that of androgenic alopecia, which is double action, working internally and working externally, except the focus is not on balancing your hormones, the focus is on reducing inflammation. Because the inflammation that is being caused to your scalp due to your immune system attacking your scalp, that is what's causing your hair follicles to no longer grow. So you need to align your lifestyle, how you eat with that of an anti-inflammatory regimen and the hair treatments you use that you apply topically also needs to be anti-inflammatory. I like to use ingredients like turmeric and ginger on the scalp. Internally, you can take apple cider vinegar and with whatever kind of inflammation you're experiencing, if you take turmeric and ginger together, it's going to immediately reduce the amount of inflammation that you have in your body. So if you combine taking turmeric and ginger together daily with also applying turmeric and ginger based hair treatments to your scalp along with other hair growth herbs and by aligning your lifestyle how you eat with that of an anti-inflammatory regimen, you will definitely be able to see growth if you are struggling with alopecia areata. And finally, the last type of alopecia I'm going to be talking about is telogen effluvium. In that 2019 study I referenced, just over 11% of the 3,000 diagnoses were of this type of alopecia. This type of alopecia happens when a disruption to the hair growth cycle occurs, particularly to the transition of the telogen phase to the antigen phase occurs, hence the name telogen effluvium. It can be caused by a triggering event, psychological stress, being pregnant or postpartum, malnutrition, endocrine disorders, medication, and chronic illnesses. With this, it really comes down to the specifics. What is particularly causing this disruption to the hair growth cycle? If it's psychological stress, therapeutic services would have to be sought after and used to regrow your hair. If it's due to pregnancy or postpartum, Hormonal imbalances can be playing a factor and that would impact my approach to healing this type of alopecia. Because this type of alopecia typically resolves on its own, my approach would be to nourish the hair follicles and accelerate the process of the hair growing back. So I would use herbs and recipes that include rice, rosemary, spur, quicker growth, as well as to nourish the hair follicles, deepen the hair follicles, and like I said, to accelerate the process of hair regrowth. When treating this, I really think self-assessment will be key. You have to think, okay, did something triggering happen to me? Did something causing me an immense amount of stress? And then build your routine from there. That would be my approach and my advice to you if you're struggling with this. And with that, lovelies, that is the end of this video. If you made it here, make sure to drop a pink heart to let us know you're part of the Lovely Squad. You know what to do with your questions. Drop them down below. Sierra and I will be immensely happy to answer any questions you may have. And hey, did you know people really think I'm lying about how I grow one inch plus a month? Yeah, I talked all about it in this video right here. Make sure to check it out if you want to learn how you can grow one inch plus of hair too. I'll see you all in the next one, lovelies. Bye.